So today I'm doing a video on an ICO that I truly enjoy researching, analyzing, talking to the team, and just feel that this one can be great. I hope you're able to share the same feelings with me and give it a chance. Here we go. Hey YouTube, welcome to CryptoPix. Before we get started, I wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers. You guys push me to do more content and quality content as much as possible. Thank you so much. Also, if you're just a viewer and you haven't subscribed yet, I still appreciate you. You guys are still amazing. But smash that subscribe button and that like button. <laughs> Before we begin, I want to remind you that this is an ICO. And please remember to do your own research before investing. Of course, investing in any ICO can be extremely risky. Also, the team at Solarium has reached out to me to do a review of their project, but I do reserve the right to be honest and objective to all of you, and that is truly my goal. With that being said, let's get started. The coin analysis I'm doing today is Solarium or Salpay, and I have done a video about this one, but I feel like I didn't give it enough attention or enough detail so that my viewers are able to understand exactly what they're doing. Now, I am getting rid of the PTMGS analysis and starting over and calling it a coin analysis, I'm trying to make it more user-friendly for the newer people. So what is this new coin analysis format? We got the problems they solve, the project idea, the coin purpose, the team marketing, competition, market cap, goals, pros and cons of the coin, and then I'm gonna end it with the stars, which I'll kind of wrap it up in a summary in that portion. So what problems is Solarium trying to solve? Many of Solarium clients have historically been required to open and maintain local corporate bank accounts where they deposit funds before loading them into their employees' cell pay wallets. And of course, I'm talking about the clients that already use the Solarium network. These transactions have historically attracted bank fees, poor forex rates, and long processing times. So what about Solarium's project idea? They want to enable employers and clients outside the Philippines to inexpensively, securely, and quickly pay the salaries of local employees and freelancers. Also, they have an e-wallet. So cash card paired with an e-wallet slash mobile app that lets you make the most of the user's money and time. It allows the users to view their transactions, shop online and overseas, and send money to major banks. They can also send payments to over 120 service providers and also apply for loans for up to 250,000 Filipino pesos, which is about $5,000 USD, while having accredited lenders compete to offer them the best interest rates. So they also have a loan platform, which has two types of loans. Flash loan, which basically, since the Solarium is the one dispersing salaries, if someone is short at the end of the month, and for example, is trying to pay someone that doesn't have enough money, the user can go into their app and ask for extra cash, and it's added to their wallet in a second. They also have easy loans, which is similar to like a Tinder for loans. An employee asks what he wants, basically, how much money, what's the purpose of the money, and how long he wants to take to make payments, so X amount of months. A lender will see the loan request and make an offer, and several lenders can kind of compete for this, and it's up to the guy who requested the loan to accept it. Once he accepts it, Solarium will transfer the money and then share the information to the lender and the borrower. So what about SalPay's coin purpose? Of course, SalPay is the token and is of course, the SalPay token is the native currency of the Solarium payment ecosystem. Using the SalPay token and the SalPay network removes the inefficiencies of transferring funds for payroll funding, basically what they're stuck with right now. Solarium will offer their existing users the option to use SalPay tokens to fund and disperse payroll to their employees. So to sum it up, the token basically acts as a bridge, allowing employers to send their money much cheaper and quicker than they currently do to employees in the Philippines where the token is converted into pesos for them to spend. So for their team, it's gonna be pretty similar to my last video. They have a few stars, Eduardo, and he was the project manager for corporate strategy and business development and Globe Telecom. Then we have the superstar Fadley. He was the head of business development for online at Globe Telecom also was a sales and marketing manager at Razor and was also in sales and marketing for Nexon Singapore. So now they're marketing. First, we got their Telegram, super active with members of the team, 
and they're ready to answer any question. And again, go check it out. Just go talk to them, even if you're semi-interested at all. And they got their Facebook. It's pretty active with announcements and updates. Their Twitter, super active with announcements and updates. YouTube is actually super active, one of the most active YouTubes I've seen with explanations of the project. They actually have a video of how their debit card works, like how the employees were actually able to grab money. Then their Medium, it's uh, fairly active with ICO information, frequently asked questions, and a few others. And Reddit, it's active with the team and the community. Now for their competition, this is kind of unique. So their projects are trying to bank the unbanked. So I picked Omisigo, Everix, and Humanic. What makes SalPay different? All of these companies are B2C companies, so they're business to consumers. They rely on they rely on getting the consumer to adopt their platform and token. With SalPay, they're B2B to C. So they're business to business to consumer, meaning they rely on the business hopping on board and then getting the user on board through the company, basically forcing the user or the consumer to use the wallet and the platform, which in my opinion is a huge advantage. So for their market cap, we're looking at 100 million total supply, 50 million circulating supply at token sale, 20 million hard cap, 7 million soft cap, now, of course, if they only hit the soft cap, this is going to kind of adjust the, the total supply and the circulating supply. Their pre-sale only had a 5% bonus. So they paid $0.40 cents per sale pay with a 5% bonus. And then their main sale were paying $0.40 cents per sale. Of course, the main sale has already started and it ends December 31st. Also, a huge plus, any unsold tokens will be burned. So if they only hit their soft cap, that is all that will be in circulation. So now Solarium's goals, or like their roadmap, and this revolves around a few huge months. We got March and June being super exciting ones. In 2018, we got January, we got the token drop. Then in March, we have 3.0 with blockchain wallet. We got tokens are gonna be available in major exchanges, which they're actually setting aside 10% of their funds to jump on to major exchanges, which in my opinion is actually super Super impressive, and it's I haven't actually seen a company at least say that that's what they're gonna do. But then they're gonna have their token exchange open in the Philippines and open their first exchange outside the Philippines, and uh, I think they're talking about in Singapore. Then in June they're gonna open their first exchange in Australia and then open exchanges in U.S. and Europe. Then they're gonna have the Salpay card in Solarium, Singapore, and Australia. So they're gonna branch out to other countries, and then December 2018. They're gonna open in Japan. So now the pros and cons of this project. It's an established company since 2013. They have a working product, that's huge to me. Their idea of B2B2C, business to business to consumer, is what separates them from the competition and makes them actually have the edge. This, of course, is my opinion. They have already 500 plus companies using Solarium, which equals to about 10,000 plus employees under these companies. They've had over 5,000 microloans on their platform, and they actually have some fairly big partnerships with another one that should be announced soon. They have a super low market cap, especially if all they hit is their soft cap. 10%, like I said, 10% of their tokens will be trying to get on quality exchanges. And then they have a token buyback for their own, like their private token exchange. And then any unsold tokens will be burned. So their cons. Minimal marketing, it's such an unknown ICO. Hopefully this changes. I mean, no one really knows about this. I hardly even knew about this a week ago. Next, their coin doesn't have much use to us, the investors. There's no dividends, governance, or anything like that. That's sometimes huge to some people. Also, this could be really bad. The ICO is during a time when Bitcoin has been extremely uncertain. Bitcoin is raging, the market's just been going crazy, people are afraid, including myself, to throw money at alts and especially ICOs. We'll see how that actually works here. So I'm giving Salpay four and a half stars, and this is because I personally believe they're a complete sleeper ICO. They have a working product since 2013, similar to Musigo, which we all know how much hype is around that. They have so many companies already on board, 500 plus, and ready to use this token. They have huge partnerships coming with another one coming super soon. I love their B2B2C idea, which kind of separates them from 
Everix and Omisago, but in my opinion, is a much better approach to get users on board. Their ICO has a super low market cap. If they only hit 7 million, which hopefully they do, that's their soft cap, they're going to be concentrating 10% of that to get on a bigger exchange, which we all know that can super push the price, which it's all that's what we all want as investors. And to be honest, there's not many negatives here, except for the lack of exposure, and that could be deadly, to be honest. And maybe the limited use of the coin for people like you and I. Also, of course, like I said, the market is just going so crazy that people are kind of afraid to invest in ICOs and even alts. And this could really hurt any ICO trying to get money right now. Also, we got that Ethereum kitten thing going on. Who knows how hard it's actually going to be to transfer your funds. So other than that, I definitely think this ICO is one to at least look at and research. Again, go jump into their Telegram and just talk to the team. Ask them any question you want and decide if you want to invest in Salpay. Of course, you don't have to. This is my own opinion, my own research, my own analysis. With that being said, thank you so much for watching my video on Salpay. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Again, I appreciate all of you. Thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.